Hi guys, um, welcome back to Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines, Guidelines with Brittany and Sarah. Nailed it. Your favorite sister cousins. Gunkles, roommates. Lovers. Sometimes. Coworkers. Coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about brand content or brands on social media. And it's like the verified checkmark accounts that comment on people's stuff on TikTok. Also, not even like brands, but like why is Lionsgate commenting on things i have no idea i figured they just want to have like a main account so when they push like different movies they can also like cross promote yeah commenting on charlie d'amelio's post hey bestie <laughs> what are we doing guys teach me this dance okay paramount plus <laughs> <laughs> you got it red socks yes so um i have a deep personal connection with brand content because i used to be a copywriter mm -hmm. um not copyright r-i-g-h-t but copywriter like w-r-i-t-e yes yes yeah, so i wrote for different brands i don't represent them um i'm not sponsored by them i just wrote the copy that you see on all the posts and all that type of stuff can you say which ones um so i worked for an ad agency that wrote for i do not represent these companies denny's linkedin ups store 20th century fox and then 20th century fox like goes into like deadpool and stuff like that mm -hmm. um the only time i really wrote for deadpool though was during was i was at a super bowl thing where we were live tweeting the super bowl and i was contributing ideas Again, don't represent any of these companies. Please do not sue us. Do not sue me, but I didn't sign an NDA when I got fired. We talked about this, yeah. but um, when I got fired, they were like, hey, can you come back in the office and sign an NDA? I was like, I am never fucking Fuck coming. no. No, and they're also like, can we get our parking pass back? I was like, Fuck no. no. <laughs> <laughs> On the weekends, I'm going to park here. It would be a general nuisance. <laughs> You're just loitering in the parking lot. <laughs> <line. laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> you used to work here. Smoking like a cigarette. And they're like, Sarah, can you leave? It's like, I'm, with it. I'm outside 25 feet of an entrance. I can smoke here. You guys don't own the sidewalk. You flash the parking pass. <laughs> You're holding it. <laughs> Fuck you. No, a lot of them were nice people. I just, the way I got fired, we both got fired from social media. Yeah, we media. both got fired the same week for the same reason, mm -hmm. for dicking around online. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to segue into what um, brand content is. We're going to talk about the origins and stuff like that. Is that yeah, okay? The, the general state of how I would say social media users view brands mm -hmm. and like the varied responses. Yeah. I think this will be interesting because I'm a millennial and you're Gen Z. Mm. And I know that we're only a couple years apart, but like millennial social media is so cringy horrible. and bad. Yeah. yeah. But then Gen Z social Not media. Not much different. Harsh. Yeah. yeah. Haters. <laughs> Just straight up haters. Okay. So let's talk about social media brand stuff. Okay. So social media marketing is the use of social media platforms and websites to promote a product or service. Most social media platforms have built in data, data analytics tools like uh, business, like Facebook sort of thing, enabling companies to track the progress, success, and engagement of ad campaigns. Companies address a range of stakeholders through social media marketing, including current and potential customers, current and potential employees, mm. journalists, bloggers, and the general public. On a strategic level, social media marketing includes the management of a marketing campaign, governance, setting the scope, et cetera, so forth. So the marketing team is usually different from like the creative team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the creative team. <laughs> So, like, the marketing team is just, like, marketing. Um, yeah, there we go. Marketing. Yes. You got it. I um, was in college for marketing. My major was marketing with uh, a minor in business analytics, and I focused on social media. Did not graduate, but because I had a complete and utter mental breakdown the yeah. last week of school. Didn't show up to any of my finals. So, I am I literally was in the clear. Like so I close was, to the finish line. And then I tripped and then just rolled off. Yeah. You know, rolled I never. Rolled your ankle. <laughs> yeah. Rolled my ankle. God. But the fun thing was is that the final grades were submitted after I walked. So my parents got to see me walk. And then a week later, I found out I didn't actually graduate. That is the biggest, like, like you won. Yeah, you I won. know. And then I... um. My mom found out, like, on my social media when I tweeted, hey, guys, I didn't actually graduate. And she's like, Sarah, what the fuck are we here for? Well, I was you like, know what? Did you take what you learned with you? Like, and uh, did you apply it to your job? Yeah, I market myself every day. Well, that, yeah. But, like, right after, like, post-college and those jobs. Oh, yeah. I um, went to, like, I was a social media manager for, like, a very small company. Mm. And I managed, like, different, like, plastic surgeons. Oh, my God. I managed, like, plastic surgeons. And I then didn't know that. 
Um, ooh, 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 um, housing, like realtors, um, doctors. Um, I did like their social media. I did for um, this oh brand called Coastal Charm, which like did like T-shirts and stuff. Yeah, so I've written random shit for like across all like brands. What a great skill though to be able to like morph your self and like speak in their voice i know be so adaptable the most validated i've ever gotten so like i've been on every single social media platform like vine and etc so mm-hmm. forth but a lot of times people are like oh you're a girl and that's why people like you and they're attracted to you they don't the actually opposite. yeah <laughs> if the anything, opposite if anything it's a handicap <laughs> to, really uh, to be a girl online but um so what was i just saying okay yeah when i was writing for different brands and people would laugh or they did like blow up you, there's no face to this brand. So they thought I was funny. Right. It had nothing to do with my physical appearance, my personality, my... Oh, like. don't you miss it. I, was, I do. <laughs> oh, my God. To be a faceless blob that people, yeah. like, people respect brands more than they respect women or people who are socialized <laughs> as women. Yeah. Duolingo was more successful than you and I will ever be. <laughs> yeah. I felt most validated when people were telling Denny's to kill themselves <laughs> than me just regularly posting online. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So social. I did social media marketing, and then I segued into copywriting, mm-hmm. which is like just making the copy for different brands. So social networking s- websites are based on building virtual communities that allow consumers to express their needs, etc., so forth. In 2014, over 80 percent of business executives identified social media as an integral part of their business. 2014. That feels a little late. It does. And also, that's a damn lie. Literally, most managers or people who are over 35 are absolute dog shit at social media, especially like CEOs and like creative people. Like, they think that social media is like a trend. Yeah. You know, they think it's going to go away. Literally, like waiting for the hammer to fall sort of thing. And like, I, there is such a staying power with especially platforms like YouTube, Mm -hmm. where like this has been and will be how we get information. Yeah. And then especially with Twitter, Twitter has a staying power. I don't know about any of the other platforms, but social media in general, this idea of like, this is how we reach an audience yeah. is not going away. Yeah. And I, like when I got fired, mm-hmm. that was exactly what I ran head first into is like these people, I was the youngest employee by about 25 years. The next youngest person was 50. Yeah. And to get fired for literally just like what's so common in our generations of just like you're just on social media it's fun everyone is yeah to get fired for that was like you guys are so off the mark you guys don't understand how important this is it really is crazy and i think a lot of people can't understand just because you have social media does not mean that you are good at social media right and so like older people are like you know social media is so important their social media is shit i'm like you're not proficient at this at all and also this is segues into something that I kind of get annoyed by so I'm getting older and I always see like people who are like 30 on TikTok Mm -hmm. and they're like I'm too old to be on TikTok I'm like shut the fuck up you are too young to refuse to integrate into society (laughs) because (laughs) social media is not going away do you think that in five to ten years Twitter all I mean individual platforms may disappear but do you think that social media will just cease to exist yeah you're essentially like you know when a car first came out oh no I'm gonna stick like the horse and buggy I'm I'll old. never learn. I'm too old to like use a phone. It's like you're 30 years old. Yeah. You don't have to dance. I mean, I know that like the internet's mainly swill, but there's also like education and causes and things you can donate to. So yeah. to refuse to be on that just c- for the sake of like not learning. Right. Is what boomers do. It really is. And it's also like throughout the pandemic, how everything, everything shifted online. Mm-hmm. There is no excuse at this point. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you're not literate in social media? Like, the, come on. Yeah. There's no excuse. It, there really is no excuse. And so, like, in 2014, 80% of business executives identified social media as integral. They identified it as integral, but they still didn't know how to implement it. Ask any social media manager ever mm-hmm. or any person who has to talk to someone over 35 about using social media. They have no fucking clue <laughs> what they're talking about. Yes. So back to Marketing 101, what I <laughs> failed. I just found out from you that marketing is not a gen ed. Yeah, it's not. I, I thought, didn't have to take... I was a communication major. I didn't have to take marketing. Yeah. I was just talking about... I took a... Um, the closest I took was like a PR class because I wanted to go into PR mm-hmm. and um, corporate social responsibility, which is like, you know, Ben and Jerry's and Patagonia are some of the highly, most highly rated corporately, corporate socially responsible brands because of their awareness of like emissions and mm-hmm. how much they give back and just 
kind of, you know, like Ben and Jerry's is always first with uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. They were one of the first brands to put that up there and be like, we wholeheartedly stand behind this. Yeah. And they put their numbers public and all that. Like, that's more the angle I was at is like when you're working with brands, how do you really gauge? Mm -hmm. Are they trustworthy? You know, all that. Are they doing their due diligence? Marketing, I never had to take, which is shocking. Yeah. Because that goes hand in hand. I feel like communications and marketing are like right, like the sister same. and brother. Yeah. You can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wait, no, you were talking about the social awareness, like Ben and Jerry's. Um, it's just like also, it's kind of funny, like around like Pride Month. Like, <laughs> so like, you know that these brands don't believe what they're saying. That's called rainbow washing. Yeah. But when, for the month, <laughs> what that, that meme of like for the month of June, they're like, we love gay people. Slay. <laughs> and it's all rainbow. And then on July 1st, it's like, fuck the gay people. Yeah, it's like hooking up with someone and the day after you don't like look them in the eyes. You're like... <laughs> Oh, God. I, do I have to go? I guess my Uber's here. Have we met? <laughs> it's literally You're awful. You're leaving, <laughs> right? So marketing 101, just so you guys know, brand awareness is the extent to which customers are able to recall or reorg recognize a brand under different conditions. Uh, brand awareness is one of the two dimensions from brand knowledge and associative network memory model. What oh. are some famous, like when you think of brands online, what do you think of? Um, well, I was thinking like just general like brand awareness, like a lot of uh, oh, restaurants, well, sure. restaurants use like yellow and red because those are the colors that make you hungry. Mm. So like Denny's, McDonald's, mm. like they're all like you, if you see those colors together, you're going to associate it with that. I'm about to body a McDouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, what, what was your question? What, when you think of like brand, being aware of famous brands online, mm -hmm. what comes to mind immediately? Okay, so I'm biased towards Denny's because I used to write for them. Sure. Um, I was, there's a, there was a couple copywriters, so I didn't write all their stuff, but Denny's being funny, Wendy's being like. I was like, going to say Wendy's too. You know, yeah. Wendy's was based out of the UK. You know really? that. I, no, it's based uh -huh. out of Chicago. No, the social media marketing for that. Oh. And it came out when, who the fuck cares, by the way, but I'm going to talk about this. I care so much. There was, um. Uh, a tweet one time where they used the British OU uh -huh. in like color or whatever. Yeah. And they were like, what the fuck, Wendy's? <laughs> and it came out that it was some British employee of their marketing agency in England yeah. that runs the Wendy's Twitter. Oh, I Who like the fuck cares? Oh, Again. I like the idea of them being outed as British. <laughs> Like, it's so random. Every single time we come on this podcast, we just talk so much shit about <laughs> British people. I can because I identify as English. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like I go in the YouTube comments and they're like, I thought you loved us. Britney has an amazing accent. <laughs> it's a lie. Yeah, it's all a lie. Yeah. What do you think when you think like brands online? When I think of, well, I have two kind of categories that I group them into. I think of cringy brands online. Mm-hmm. And it's a hard thing to talk about because you and I get paid by these people, yeah, by these companies to literally do our job. So at a certain level, you know, you have to censor what you're saying. But I think there are certain brands that do it well. Mm -hmm. And I think there are certain brands that, um, for example, in a past one, the Furries episode, we talked about how when furries on Twitter were tweeting at um, the f tiger, Tony the Tiger yes. from Frosted Flakes, they were doing mass blockings where they were like, you're so hot, you're sexy, like Tony the Tiger was blocking them. They did the same thing to Chester the Cheetah from Cheetos. Yeah. And he engaged with it. Yes. That is the key to success. And mm -hmm. so that's what I really think about is like, are you willing to put up with the bullshit that the general average internet user yeah. is going to tweet at you? Yes. That's the path to success. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are definitely brands that do it right and brands that... Mm -hmm. fail miserably i've read so many pitch decks about like mm -hmm. you know what our message is on social media and like how we talk and all these things and at no point in any pitch deck is there like a warning like hey people <laughs> are shitheads online <laughs> you could tweet a picture of flowers and like i hope everyone like has an amazing day you're gonna be burned alive yeah you know and it's just something you have to roll with don't block these people you're going to make it worse right yeah. If someone says, I want to see what that dick do to Chester the Cheetah, <laughs> right? You got to say, well, come over and find out. Send you them a $10 engaged. gift card yes. and hope they never reply to you ever right. again. You say, thank you for your inquiry. <laughs> Please DM me for those photos. Yes. You got to engage. Slide into my DMs. Slide into my DMs. For Cheeto dick. It's me, Chester. <laughs> <laughs> if, I ran the, <laughs> if I ran the Chester the Cheeto account, I would go buck wild. Really? Yeah. If I ran the Duolingo account on TikTok, oh. I would be the... Duolingo made like a foot fetish joke. And I was like... So there's like different... We talk about like 
uh, different waves of internet experience mm -hmm. where like people from like you know the like 95 to 2005 are like the first wave and yeah. then you have like the migration from Facebook to Twitter and now and you MySpace yeah and then you have like all the like the short form video platforms mm -hmm. like Vine and TikTok is like another wave mm -hmm. um, so when you talk so there's like different waves also in brand marketing so like my associate with brand marketing is the second wave where it's like mostly like you know funny sort of goofy shit on yeah. twitter from these verified accounts yes and now there's a third wave happening where it's just uh, like gen z has taken over and now they're just so fucking horny yeah yeah the fact that duolingo teaches you second language or third languages and they're like i want to fuck your feet yeah it's like wow God, i want to suck on them toes now i want to download the app <laughs> I should learn Spanish, okay? If this is what it's and about. What's the? It's a whole meme too. If if y'all didn't know this, well, Duolingo is kind of. We should give a yes. backstory of Duolingo. They're kind of infamous online for just being that. Like people have a really positive perception of them because mm -hmm. they're willing to go there. Yeah. Right. Not a lot of brands. It's like, oh, we can't for you know keep it within the brand, and that's not our policy. And da da da. Mm -hmm. Some brands just fucking go there, and Duolingo does. And there was a meme a while ago, and I think it's still around of like. Duolingo is so threatening with yeah. their push notifications. <laughs> Are <laughs> like, they? You've missed your session today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's that meme with the, the owl with the knife. Yeah. It's like when they run with that, mm -hmm. and they do on TikTok, it's so fucking funny. It really is. I love when, um, I well, actually, it's a love-hate thing when, like, different apps are, like, so aggressive. <laughs> like, do you have, like, the, um, like, Apple Watch or anything, like, with a step counter? No. It's like, you lazy piece of shit. <laughs> Can you get out of bed? You've been vertical for eight hours. Horizontal for eight hours. Vertical, so you're standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Your knees are locking. You're standing at attention for eight hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey guys, it's Brittany. Coming to talk to you about Cerebral. Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. Connect with your counselor and therapist on your own schedule through your laptop or the Cerebral mobile app. You can schedule sessions based on what's most convenient for you. You don't have to wait weeks to be seen. 80% of members, in fact, see a provider within five days. You can do your sessions on a laptop or a phone so you can always find an area at home where you're most comfortable. Cerebral offers affordable treatments that are one-third the price of traditional therapy. Treatment options are available with or without insurance. Cerebral is a network for several insurers, and they're working every day to grow their partnerships. With in-network, your monthly cost is even lower. And listen up. For beautiful listeners of this podcast, you can receive 65% off your first month of medication management and care counseling at Cerebral.com slash VCG. Go to Cerebral.com slash VCG for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. Circling back to the brand awareness, awareness does not necessarily mean that the consumer must be able to recall a specific brand name, but they must be able to recall enough distinguishing features from mm. for purchasing to proceed. Mm -hmm. Yes. What brand are you just constantly... Wait, we just fucking talked about this. Well, you know what? Like, just from reading that, I'm thinking of like Mr. Peanut, uh -huh. the Pringles guy, the Colonel Sanders. The Pringles guy. The Pringles guy like the with the Pringles mustache. Face. Yeah. yeah, he's terrifying. Yeah, a little bit. The Tr Monopoly guy. Mm -hmm. What is this thing with like old men being the, the Quaker Oats? Yeah, what is it with old men? I don't know. It's don't either know. that or like Wendy's the pinup sexy girl. Yeah, it's weird. I don't ever see an old man and think, oh, I want snack food. God damn, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Colonel <laughs> Sanders, shit. I'm starving. I forgot. <laughs> Go for chicken. So um, the rise of social media networks has increased the opportunities for opinion leaders, geez, to play a role in brand awareness. Yes. Opinion leaders. In theory, anyone can be an opinion leader, uh, celebrities, journalists, public figures. But the rise of digital environment has changed our understanding of who is potentially who is a potentially useful influencer? Arguably not us. Yes. There's also like different categories of people online. Yes. There are micro influencers. There's influencers. There's content creators who are different from influencers. Mm -hmm. I would say that you're an influencer and I'm a content creator. But I hate that. You are like We're a, both comedians. We are. But you're more of a beacon and I'm like, a, you know, a rolling hill. 
that's just constantly, you know what I mean? I don't agree with that. I don't think that I lead anyone's thoughts to anything like... Well, I think it's a weird thing because like what you're talking about in those waves where it kind of overlaps, where I'm kind of this TikTok wave and you were the Vine wave, where people are more nostalgic for you Mm -hmm. and the content you create and they have a positive perception of what you've done online. Versus for me, it's like I'm relatively so new. I mean, it's barely been two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. So I think that's more what it is. And the concept of influencer came out with like, well... I don't know, Tana Mojo kind of. The, I when was, I think of influencer, I think of like cringy James Charles Tana Mojo. I was going to say MySpace had like the first couple influencers, but like when it became a formal job, it was like. That's more what I'm referencing. Right, like yeah. Vine. Uh, like no one knew what to do with Vine money at all. A hundred percent. Like they didn't know how to like file their taxes at all. So they just kept making money and they didn't realize they had to pay taxes right. on it. Um, so yeah, that was, so I think that's like the actual, like when it came about. Yeah. Yes. I, I think I would agree with you in theory, but personally I fucking hate the word influencer and And I don't want to be grouped in with them. I hate the term YouTuber, but I still am. And I hate TikToker. Oh my gosh. Anytime I tell people like I'm on like a dating app and they're like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, (laughs) don't, (laughs) I'm like, which one is worse that you would like to hear YouTuber or podcast host? (laughs) And they're like. I have literally matched with girls um, who do OnlyFans, and like I'm like, okay, don't judge me for what I do. And they say, oh my god, don't judge me for what I do. And I'm like, I would never. I'm a YouTuber. And they're like, I unmatch. They do. <laughs> no. I was like, no, stop it. We literally do the same taxes. You can't unmatch with me. Oh, that is awful. Yeah, influencer YouTuber is just a cringy title. It is, but I don't know the. I think. We're at this turning point where people want to be a YouTuber. Like my younger sister and like her friends want to be social media people, Mm -hmm. which is wild. That's wild. Yeah. But I also think that your sister just started college. So it's like now it's like an actual profession. People who are my age who are about to be like 30, they still have like Jake Paul like right. you know these right. pieces of shit like prank it people ruined it yeah they're like oh that's what you're like no i don't want to fucking hang out with you yeah yes so there is the history of social media stanley wrote not really important mm-hmm. <laughs> before there's social media people in the 70s and 80s spent most of their time uh on social networks like dating sites and online forums in the 70s and 80s so stanley what are you what are we doing six <laughs> degrees live journal and friendster uh, I've heard of Friendster. I've heard of that. And the, yeah, so I was talking about the different waves, the dot com bubble of 1995 to yeah. 2002. I was on AIM, AIM yeah. but I wasn't on like, I wasn't in the first wave of like the internet. Yeah. You know, so I wasn't on that. It was a little bit before our time. Mm-hmm. It be- S- what? This is also like just so a tangent, but I kind of want to talk about it because it, it falls in this Pam and Tommy. You been you know about that? No. Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. Oh yeah. The new show just came out about them. I've been watching it. The actors do an incredible job, but it's very controversial because around this time, since we're talking about internet phenomenons and being viral and all that, the first ever celebrity sex tape was yeah. uploaded online in 1995-96 uh-huh. and was being sold online. And that was the first thing ever where it was like the power of the internet when it comes to pop culture and circulating information, Mm -hmm. whether for good or worse, started around here. And that's wild to think about. I was born in 1997. Like, that's wild. Oh, my God. You know what's really crazy? People on TikTok think that algorithm is Al Gore. Since Al Gore, yeah, people learn about Al Gore and they're like, "Is that why it's called algorithm?" I was like, "No, that's just uh, yes, th- yes, actually, yeah." It's, he also predicts the weather. <laughs> it was gonna be called George Bushism. <laughs> like, no, it, that's isn't it crazy? He like is like credited with like starting the internet. I, I guess. didn't fucking know that is stupid. I didn't know that. Oh, what that I that is stupid. <laughs> Who would ever say that? Whatever, like whoever posted that originally must be a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta check my phone. All right, so um, as Google, <laughs> Yahoo, and MSN search engines involve evolved companies turn to seo strategies so seo is search engine optimization where you buy like different terms mm-hmm. so like if you're i don't know schitzel's you know pretzels you ha- schitzel's pretzels <laughs> yeah so you um and then you would search the term schitzel's if there's other people with that name like if you you can pay to get your name pushed to the top right essentially yes so that's seo in a nutshell um uh, 2003 to 2004, the arrival of social media sites like Facebook, LinkedIn, and MySpace initiated the shift of internet users from multiplayer online games into social networking sites. 
Oh my gosh. Eventually, businesses picked up on the positive effects of social media business site presence on e-commerce and started creating their own social media prof- business profiles on the mm-hmm. popular networking sites. Remember when, like, it, like, um, <laughs> Never mind. You know, like when people like so brands first started like making uh, like uh, social like so. You got it. Social medias. You know, like their tweets would be like, "God, I love pancakes." Hashtag pancakes. <laughs> hashtag waffles. Hashtag syrup. Hashtag international. Yeah, and you see that now, and you're like, "Are you on drugs?" I think, but we've circled back to I think that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. I hop tweeted, "God damn, I love pancakes." Hashtag pancakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Fuck. I Fuck love me. it. <laughs> <laughs> Syrup so fucking delicious. <laughs> like, and then the, the replies would be like, Stan BTS. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I whenever I wrote for like Denny's twi- uh, Twitter, anything that happened with BTS, I try to like write BTS tweets, and oh, we yeah. have to go through like this approval process. And they're like, "Does anyone know who that is?" Like the owners of the the marketing team or whatever. And I was like, "Yes, if we tweet it right now, it's gonna blow up yeah. because everyone I know that you don't know shit about BTS, but everyone else, and right. that's the same with like social media. Everyone else <laughs> knows shit about social media, so just trust me on this." How? What was your experience like with? Because it's this, we were talking about this on the car on the way here. It's this big misconception of like, oh, what intern is running the da 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 TikTok? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that really how it is? I absolutely hate that joke because you, I, you wouldn't like large companies wouldn't let like an intern run be like the face or the voice of their company because we've seen it happen in the past where like, oh my gosh, I dated someone who was uh, worked in an advertising agency and they the one of their new people had the brand on their phone and mm-hmm. they forgot to switch from their personal to like <gasps> from the brand and so they tweeted from like a sports company like oh my god he's so fucking hot <laughs> and i was like so you you uh, usually have a separate phone. They wouldn't let an intern do that. Why they always say intern is because like uh, younger people are more like socially social media literate. Um, absolutely. You wouldn't um, put a forty five year old in charge of you know Morton table salt. Right. I mean you could because Morton you'd buy it whether you needed it or not. Right. Morton could like literally be the most racist company online and people would be like still buying salt. You fucking need salt. Yeah. You know what else is a a question that I constantly ask myself is why. Why? That's a great example. Why are certain companies, why do they feel the need to have an online presence? Why the fuck does Morton Table Salt need a TikTok account? I think at a certain point, there's like nothing to lose. You know, like you still want to sell, you still want to get sales, but it's also (sighs) like, it's just like a fun thing to like have a social media presence. I guess. But like, if you're going to be that guarded and that like, this doesn't align with our brand. Yeah. It does kind of bug me when like uh, brands are super strict about what they say. Like I did write some stuff for like, okay. And their approval process for, like, getting something out there took literally weeks. Insane. I know. And so if a meme, that's actually a huge issue. So memes are usually, like, 24 hours. Yep, yep. And I can't be waiting fucking two weeks to get this meme approved because I'm not going to tweet it, like, when it gets approved. And then that's how the brands get the, like, reputation of being out of touch. And, like, especially on TikTok, trends move within 12 to, I would say, 48 hours. And it's over. Yeah. If you're working on an ad campaign for TikTok and the company's like, we want you to do this viral dance to mm-hmm. our our song. Yeah. But I'm posting it six weeks from now. Yeah. It's so fucking cringe. <laughs> and it's this level of like, I need money because this is my job. But mm-hmm. holy fuck, I don't want to post this. Yeah. It's like because a lot of people in advertising do traditional advertising like print or um, like TV. Mm-hmm. So they have a lot like longer time to create this stuff and they just are like oh people are on social media so they made a social media department Uh but they're still going by like old advertising rules yeah and the life cycle for anything online is 24 hours don't fucking tweet it after 24 hours they're like can you promote this motorola phone and plank at the same time (laughs) it's like it's 2022 i'm doing the ice bucket challenge for like (laughs) razor scooters what do you mean renegating for morton table salt yes but that actually okay so now you said that like um i love pancakes that actually would be so fucking funny (laughs) you're so out of touch where you're doing the ice bucket challenge (laughs) that'd be so funny (laughs) i I really do think like i don't know if they could really tap into the sense of humor that i don't even know if it's gen z it's tiktok sense of humor yeah for better or worse, it's cringe sometimes, but like it is that hyper ironic post post irony, yeah, whatever. Like when you 
fully go back full circle mm-hmm. to that shit. That's the key to success. Yeah. But you can't know that unless you're chronically online. Mm-hmm. That is the key to being a successful marketing Yes. Account. Yes. You have to have someone in the room who is chronically online. Also, um, you should have someone who is very PC in your um, group as well. 100%. And that comes from diversity. Yes. You should always have someone who is like sees the worst in every single social media post because there are things, even if someone is chronically online, they forget that like, you know, people are different. Yeah. Um, so you need to have someone who's like super anal about everything in the room. Thinking six steps ahead. They are annoying, but they will save you a shit ton of stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, even in traditional media, like the Pepsi thing with Kendall Jenner. Oh, Jesus Christ. They didn't have one person of color in that fucking no. room. No. When it's a room full of white men being like, Kendall Jenner, I don't know, this is going to be a great campaign. This is going to yeah. go crazy for this one. Oh, my God. It's basically a circle jerk at a certain point. Fun it fact, um, a circle jerk with girls is called a daisy chain. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. But isn't that so sweet? I that is um, awful to think about. I will admit. I think it's cute. Okay. Okay. I want to talk about the passive approach to kind of brands online. So social media can be a useful source of market information and a way to hear customer perspective, which is important if you're trying to market a product to that specific audience. Mm-hmm. Blogs, content communities, and forums are platforms where individuals share their reviews and recommendations of brands, products, and services. Businesses are able to tap and analyze the customer voices and feedback generated in social media. Social media is a relatively inexpensive source of market intelligence, which can be used by marketers and managers to track and respond to consumer identified problems and to detect market opportunities. So I don't know, this kind of leads me to when it comes to things like climate change or important social movements being hyper aware, mm-hmm. but being late to react. Yes. It's like, at least they said something, but it's also like, do we really need Chex Mix's perspective on Black Lives Matter? Mm-hmm. I think it is um, important sometimes, especially if the brand has a history of like racism. Mm-hmm. Like Denny's had a history of like racist things that happen within Denny's. Mm-hmm. So on the website, we actually... They made a page dedicated to, like, how they don't stand for, like, racism in their stores and stuff like that. Um, But it is also, like, you're just so late on it. Exactly. In these meetings, you know, there's, like, everyone knows what to say. Like, in these meetings are, like, fully functioning adults who, like, have their hand on the pulse. However, it's just the higher-ups who slow everything down. Right, 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 right. And they're super paranoid that you're going to say something. (laughs) They're going to get in trouble. Because the people who are higher-ups are, like, just, like they jerk each other off all the time Mm -hmm. they're just like those linkedin influencers that we talked about they're so fucking insufferable it really is and it's like that translates Mm -hmm. through the content that's being greenlit to be posted yes exactly so everyone i mean they're i hate the late to respond because i know that everyone in the meeting usually knows what should be said or what Mm -hmm. could be done and then they just like hindered every single step of the way right i would love to see how ben and jerry is like Th- what their organization like looks like internally. Yeah, Ben & Jerry's is, uh, it's just fantastic. I mm-hmm. mean, we focused a lot of, when I took that course, it was so just every single metric was they are in the right from our perspective as internet consumers. Yes. You know, like everything that you would want them to say, they said it and they mean it and mm-hmm. you know that versus this, you know, two months late, we stand with, yeah. no, you don't, girl. Yeah. No, you don't. Anyway, so the passive approach, um, like traditional market research methods such as surveys, focus groups, and data mining, which are time-consuming and costly and which take weeks or even months to analyze, marketers can use social media to obtain live or real-time information about consumer behavior (laughs) and viewpoints on a company's brand or products. Yeah, so like you can go on Instagram right now and post a poll that says, do you want to see a picture of my open asshole? Mm -hmm. And you'll collect enough data to be like... Do my consumers want to see my open asshole? Is this a good strategy? Most time, no. (laughs) Hey, hard answer, no. (laughs) Right? But you can still test the waters. You get a lot of replies that are like, hey, can you put a maybe? Can you put a maybe option? Uh (laughs) It's one of those where you drag it, least likely, most likely. (laughs) Break my hole. (laughs) Then you have like the slider. Is this disturbing? <laughs> there was this photo. There was this photo of Nick Avocado. You yes. know him. He's a famous, like, mukbanger from YouTube. He just eats, and mm-hmm. he's like big. Um, he posted this picture on Instagram with a poll that said, 
am I cute? And it was a selfie and it said yes or no. And it was 90% no. (laughs) I can't set myself up like that. People are so brutally honest online. It's just awful. (laughs) So we just talked about the passive approach. The active approach um, is influencer marketing. Social media can be used as communication channels targeting very specific audiences with social media influencers and social media personalities as effective customer engagement tools. Influencer marketing allows brands the opportunity to reach their target audience in a more genuine, authentic way via a special group of selected influencers advertising their products or service. In fact, brands are set to spend up to $15 billion on influencer marketing by 2022. Damn. We'd love to see some of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you want to pass any of that our way, please. any brands listening. <laughs> we have sponsorship segments. Yeah, please. Please reach out to us. We're very open about the brands we work with. And I will say, I, I want to say this because we're talking about it. It's been such a learning curve uh-huh. to work with these brands and figure out what it means to fully endorse a product. Because yeah. when you see the fee, or the check amount, it's like, I'll say anything these bitches want me to say because that number is insane. Yeah. But there comes a responsibility with it that took me a few months of like kind of stumbling to, to get, you know, like I did a campaign with, I don't know if I can say it, but it was a pride campaign for a clothing company. First of all, I'm not gay. Yeah. Second of all, um, the clothing company uses child labor. Like a lot do. Yeah. It's kind of hard to find one that's ethically sourced. I mean, that's just kind of the state of the world. But I accepted this brand deal, did it, no problem. Um, And then within probably about four to five hours, I started seeing comments that were like, not you endorsing child labor, like not you accepting a handout from da 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 Uh And it's just like, fuck me. You don't even think about it. Yeah, like I did a a brand deal with tampons like one time and they used to use like prison labor. And so like everyone was like yelling at me when I posted, I was like, they, I made sure to reach out beforehand to like ask if they still use prison labor Mm -hmm. and they absolutely do not. So it's, you also just have to be super aware of like what all, like how corrupt companies can be. Exactly. And I had no idea that that was even a step that I had to, you know, like when I literally went from working at a bank to like these major brands being like, here's some money to say something positive about our product. Yeah. And at the time it was even more like I didn't like the the <laughs> outcome of the kombucha video was I don't like kombucha. Yeah. Right? It's fucking gross. But it made sense for me to do a brand deal with kombucha because the meme was about kombucha. Yeah. That sort of I, I so I started off on the wrong foot with that of like mm-hmm. I'm accepting money to promote a product that I personally don't even like. Yeah. And it took a while to figure out like, OK, now that I've built myself up to this business, because it is a business being an influencer, air quotes, you have to be very selective. And like you said, do your due diligence mm-hmm. in the research and you get roasted alive if you don't, which is yeah. well deserved. Yes. And also, I think audiences are not I understand like holding influencers to a certain standard. Sure. But I also feel like audiences hold them too high of a standard. Absolutely. Like if there's something one issue that happened in the past, they physically like they cannot let go of that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's just there's also no crash course for like new influencers. No. You a, a lot of times people get ripped off is the main thing that happens. Yeah. Like, you'll see, um, there's, like, this eye contact company that keeps emailing yeah, everyone. That one and the water bottle company. Yeah, they're like, can you do, like, 10 ads for $500 on TikTok? You have half a million followers. And so if you're new to the internet, that's a fucking horrendous deal. Like, that is awful. But it's money. Uh-huh. I would, if you have half a million followers, you should be asking for 5000 up. Yeah. There is, there's no way that you should be doing 10 videos like that. But they, these kids don't know how much they're worth. And or, a lot of them are in high school or college where yeah. any money is extra money yeah and it also gets really weird when these people are under 18 and you're taking advantage of them you're definitely not paying them yeah but now that i've been online for a long time now it's just a matter of like looking into where these companies are from yeah i know one time i got reached out by this like this linen company that made like super expensive linens Mm -hmm. and they had like this very like hawaiian tropical theme hawaiian name and i was like hold the fuck up yeah pause i looked into who owned this company four white guys who lived in colorado or something Uh, i was like there's no way in hell like i'm gonna like put my name on this yeah so it's just a matter of doing your own research but also being super um understanding to younger not so much like people are physically young i mean they can be like literally young but also very new to the internet Mm -hmm. because you you really don't know how to navigate you don't and it's also like like i said i've aligned my or 
partnered with certain brands that looking back, it's like, I wish I didn't do that. But yeah. I didn't know any better. Yeah. And so you take that knowledge, you know, you apologize if necessary, and then you move forward. You take that and apply it to future brand deals. And it's unfortunate that that's kind of, you know, what we rely on mm -hmm. is I am a walking billboard for other people. We're whoring ourselves out to brands. I definitely don't mind whoring myself out to brands. Well, sure, because we've talked about this before. I you have a... missed your first opportunity. Okay, so let me tell you this. So when I was on Vine, everyone was commenting. I didn't make ads on Vine. They were like, oh, I love that you don't sell out. And I thought that was like a point of, it was a point of pride for sure. me. And then you know what happened? Vine died, and I went to a nine to five for three <laughs> years, and it was fucking awful. And then YouTube picked up, and they were like, do you want to do ads? I will sell my fucking soul. <laughs> I am never gonna sit. So whenever like an influencer is like, I feel bad for doing ads. No, the uh, the alternative is just killing yourself at an office job, chained to a desk, yes. working for the weekend. Get a business manager, save up, invest in stuff, do ads, yeah. like ethical ads. You know. Yeah. As as much as you can. Mm -hmm. This I'm, is a whole other thing. Well, were you done? Meanwhile, Sorry, I'm selling vibrators every hey. other. But they're good vibrators. And they are pays the bills. <laughs> Keeps our lights on. <laughs>
I don't know. Like I, I always saw brands as untouchable mm -hmm. online. Like you can't interact with these. Da, da, da. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And it's always someone with an anime profile picture. I was dying for someone to fucking talk to me because you're supposed to like encourage engagement. And yeah. it's always the same people every single time who are like, I found a dead rat in my pancakes. What do I do now? <laughs> you also found a dead rat last week. Stop going to that fucking location. You've been tweeting me the same thing <laughs> for three years. You can't spill hot coffee on yourself every single week. Speaking of shut the fuck up, liberal, there was one that I saw. It's like, I lubricate my AR-15 with liberal cum. <laughs> and I was like, are you making... At least you made us cum. What? Also, wouldn't that clog the gun? Uh, probably. That mm -hmm. can't be good for like the functionality of the weapon. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Human body fluids yeah. in the gun. Human secretion yeah i just peed in my guns <laughs> why don't they work <laughs> all right so this is how to avoid being cringe um by ad week so you know this is oh god okay after tiktok shared the horror stories of west elm caleb okay so west elm caleb mm -hmm. is this guy on i think bumble or hinge who basically w went on like dates with most of manhattan yeah and he like gaslit all these women and then all these women realized like when one lady made a tiktok about west elm caleb because he works at west elm mm -hmm. everyone's like oh shit we're all dating the same, the same guy. guy he gets around and i would like to Get around. Okay. Um, you should DM him. I, no, I mean, like, <laughs> he's like my Jordan Belfort. Like, he, like, teaches me, like, how to, like, date <laughs> multiple teach people me at your once. Ways. <laughs> um, so, brands took the opportunity to use the new meme to market their brands. The online consensus that reactions from brands like Hellman's, uh, uh, Mayonnaise, um, Ruggable, <laughs> Ruggable, Daily Harvest, and the many other brands that chimed in were self promotional, awkward, and overall cringe worthy. What do you mean Hellman's is not on the pulse? <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, let me pull this up. Okay. So there is a tweet. Uh, West Elm Caleb thinks mayo is spicy. Hellman's tweeted that. From the Hellman's official account. Oh. Daily Harvest. Attention, West Elm Caleb victims. Sustainable farmers treat their girls like they treat their... Ew! Ew! I can't even finish it! Sustainable farmers treat their girls like they treat their soil. Zero toxic behavior. With the clapping emoji. Zero toxic behavior. Oh. Ew! Oh. Ew! Oh. Oh. oh my god! And then there's another one from Peacock TV. To everyone who is hurt by West Elm Caleb, you know what to do. And then it's a picture of a ginger woman who's an actress. I cannot, they, they all look like. Yeah. It says, because I turned into a wolf and I ate him. Oh, that's, that's so fucking this lame. This is so fucking cringe. When in, here's another one. It's a TikTok screenshot um, of a side of a building, which in what I'm assuming is New York, because yes. he's from New York. When an entire company takes out a building ad, throwing shade at you and it says red flag six four mustache furniture designer because he works at west Elm. so but what was the ad what was for uh what was the ad for what's the other one that he put i don't fucking know ruggable i guess ruggable sounds like when you grow out your pubes <laughs> i'm sorry i'm ruggable curtainable and ruggable <laughs> curtainable <Yeah. laughs> she's a very curtainable woman i love the idea of a company named curtainable <laughs> So, um, West Elm Caleb, a lot of people said it's capitalizing on a person that the internet is going after, and it's a cheap shot. Mm -hmm. um, the social strategy director of Deutsch, uh, LA, who works on Taco Bell social media accounts. Yeah, so, um, in influencer world, it's very similar to brands. You're not supposed to dogpile on someone. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're, um, West Elm Caleb truly is anonymous. He's not, like, um, the president or someone like that who's, like, open for critique. While he may be a shitty human being, you're, it, eth it's unethical to dogpile on onto someone. Like, so someone could reply to me on TikTok, hey, you're ugly, and I want to wear your skin as, like, a suit. Sure. I could, I mean, I could uh, comment back. But then my audience would dogpile, which seems unfair because you right. are yelling at me. But like I then it would sick my entire following on you. Right. And that's why I created a burner to tell people to kill themselves because it's not unethical if I have no following. <laughs> sure. You know, if it's user zero 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 nine, like then it's I'm no one. It's also like. Now you are responsible for those people yes. attacking that person, even though the whole situation began with someone attacking you. Yes, it, it, it'll take it too far because stands are notoriously Just unhinged. That. They're stand. They will do anything for you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too far into this because 
Kanye West, for example, um, his ranting sent a lot of hate towards Pete Davidson. And he actually, Kanye had to say, like, dude, don't, like, per, don't try to go after Pete at all. Because, like, you're going to actually hurt him. The, it, there crosses a line where it's like, you are threatening that person's life. Maybe not you directly, but the wake of what you've done yeah. and the things you've said yes. have now endangered that person's life. And that is when the internet... We're, we want to do a whole episode on this of like when the internet starts to become dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, like when it's no longer just Kanye ranting when yeah. it's like these are people that really want to do harm and they will find a way to do harm. Yes. And so as a major corporation, you're punching down when you're focusing right. on a single individual. If a major company made fun of another major company for like their slip up, that's totally fine. They have billions of dollars. They'll be good. Mm -hmm. West Elm Caleb, this sh greasy douche douchebag from fucking Brooklyn, mm -hmm. cannot defend himself even if he is a douchebag. Right. Yes. Um, so... Like, continuing how to not be cringe online, in today's social media landscape, brands are desperate to outdo each other's quirkiness and finally win over a generation of socially conscious consumers that are often at war with big corporations. Period. Yes. So, like, what's really different about marketing to Gen Z is Gen Z is very, like, um, individual and, like, self-healing sort yeah. of things. Like, millennials are, like, feel good. Oh, like, that's sweet and endearing. Gen Z is, like, if this doesn't serve me, I simply do not give a shit. Yeah. And so they're trying to navigate how do they adjust their tone to talk to a younger generation. And I know that... What's beneath Gen Z? Gen A. Those people are fucking feral. And <laughs> mm -hmm. they're children. And I, I can't even imagine, like, what brand marketing is going to turn into then. But it's also strange because... There's this move online from like, you know, wearing name brand and having fancy things and material objects to thrifting and mm -hmm. cottage core and living a sort of unbranded, unlabeled life. Mm -hmm. And so in more ways than one, you know, whether that's sexuality and da da da. So the pandering to, you know, you want this object or like pride, da da da. Mm -hmm. People see right through it now. And it's very yeah. hard for brands. Yes. It's very easy to market to millennials because millennials want to look good. Right. Gen Z wants to feel good. And Gen Alpha is just. Wanna ki they're out for blood. <laughs> they want to kill people. <laughs> they're like literally like 11 years old, but they're out, they're out for fucking blood. I saw, oh my gosh, there's so many, oh, yeah, I wish I had a TikTok that I could talk about now, but, um, so Twitter's 2022 Real Talk reported the state of brand behavior found that 9 in 10 users value brands that have a strong sense of who they are. Period. Half of users also answers that brand, also answered that brands that rely on humor and jokes can feel outdated today. Yeah, so like when I wrote for Denny's, it was going really well a couple years ago, and now they just also write jokes now, it's the same, but it hasn't evolved. Right. It's very like stale. You gotta keep up. It's this, It's like the Lele Pons thing. Like it's like maybe she was funny at first with the was she? maybe with the Logan Paul was funny at first and then he just got bad. Yeah. Like that's like he well actually he changed. He metamorphosized into a piece of shit. That but he's had a weird arc. Yeah, come back. <laughs> he has. I don't understand <laughs> it. Fucking strange. Yes. Okay. So there's a push for brands to act less like corporations and more like people on social media, but yeah. enforcing a humor centric image that doesn't align with the central brand purpose can leave consumers feeling like the brand is trying too hard. Yes. Um, I'm trying it's to... very transparent. Like people see right through it. Mm -hmm. Um. But I'm trying to think of a brand like where hum they should not utilize humor. Ooh, like, okay, so back in the day, I used to do social media for a plastic surgeon, and he... <laughs> you trying out your new stand-up bits on the plastic surgeon account? <laughs> Dude, no, no, no. So we were going to make this ad one time, and he brought all these guys into a room, and um, there he showed this, like, footage that he filmed, and it was this manatee swimming in a pool. And when the manatee came out of the water, it was a beautiful woman. So he was suggesting that he could take you from a manatee to a beautiful woman, oh. and then... The screen went dark, and then it said his plastic surgery on there. Oh, my God! And so he was like, this is so funny. And all the men in the room, room agreed that that is so funny. And I was like, if you put that online, you're going to be, like, fucking roasted alive. It's over for you. Yeah, you're telling me that you think of women as manatees? And even, like, so that goes into, like, plastic surgeons now. You Since there's, like, we're talking about, like, fat phobia and stuff. Yeah. You know, you have to be super aware of how you market plastic surgery. Because it's not like... if someone Someone has, you know, uh, like a nose, like someone has a nose, like they're like, we can fix your nose. There's nothing inherently wrong with right. your nose in the first place. Right. So you have to eliminate fix and all these sort of like words. And they wouldn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. It's this, it's exactly 
what we're talking about of like people understand at a certain level that the internet is the successful way to market. Yes. But the successful way that they think is not like you have to be online to mm -hmm. a certain extent and they're not and it crashes and burns and it's yes. so hard to watch. Yeah, because the internet is very much its own like language now that um, you have to be very fluent to succeed. You can't just know conversational words and then try to come up with like a great marketing campaign that just doesn't work out for anyone. Right. Yeah, so you have to be chronically online. You have to speak the language of the mentally ill to market to the mentally ill. 100%. Mm -hmm. And this, it says here, brands need to foster who they are as opposed to going after who they want to like them. Mm -hmm. Very, very accurate. Yes. And I don't want to see a funny tweet from Daily Harvest. I don't need to see that. I want to see like, you know, there's such a tap into the communities that need you, you yeah. know, by being authentically you. Like if you're trying to promote a healthy eating lifestyle that it's farm to table and it's to your doorstep. There's a huge community of people with eating disorders online that mm -hmm. could really benefit from something like that. Like tap yeah. into, you know, this is it's about loving yourself and, you know, ethically sourced and da 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 da. You don't need to fucking be on Twitter tweeting mm -hmm. West Elm Caleb is a douchebag. Yeah. So a lot of brands are like scared to take those stances, though, because they're like it's a polarizing stance, mm -hmm. you know, like the same with like Ben and Jerry's and their mm -hmm. like stance on Black Lives Matter. That's a huge thing in like brand you know, dumb. Mm -hmm. So they took a hard stance and they did lose sales, but they also like, you hey, know, it makes up for it. Yeah. What's that saying? Like a friend to all is a friend to none. And I think all of these brands want to be a friend to everyone. And if you're a friend to everyone, that means you take no hard stances on anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, and that's not respectable. And people don't like that, you know, but it's also again, back to the issue at hand <laughs> of like, why are brands, why is checks mix having to tweet? We do not align ourselves with ISIS. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Why have we gotten to this point? I don't understand. Well, I do understand the evolution, but it is so fucking unnecessary. They might have done that because someone asked them if they did, but that also makes me think about the person in the morning who wakes up and they're eating their Chex Mix and they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Does Chex Mix align with ISIS? Oh, fuck me. <laughs> and now if they get loud enough on social media, Chex Mix is like, no, we don't. We, we never said that. And yeah. now they're having to defend themselves because <laughs> yes. now it's a rumor online that Chex Mix gives money to ISIS. Let's start this rumor. I It reminds me of the Bo Burnham uh, song. Where, or not the song, the little clip from inside where he's like, who are we? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ivory soap. Mm -hmm. Who are we? And do we, it really is like, why are we here? Mm -hmm. What why do we can't stand brands for? Just be, yeah. Why can't brands just be what they are, push the product and that's it? Yes. I don't understand it. I'd rather you just be like, so authentically you, like if you sell soap, do bubble bath ads. Yeah. Post a picture of you mm -hmm. naked because with soap. Because if, if you're going to be raunchy or gross, you better be totally fucking disgusting. Yeah. You know, I don't want to see like someone who like chickened out halfway yeah. through being raunchy. Yeah. I don't want to edge with my Chex Mix. <laughs> so there is, um, <laughs> there is this PBR making a joke. It was deleted, but I think this is what I fucking love about the internet. Can I read this? Please. PBR tweeted, um, which is a beer brand. If you don't know what PBR is. Paps Blue Ribbon. Not drinking this January? Try eating ass. This tweet has been deleted. <laughs> <laughs> 2,931 quote tweets. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, it's actually pretty, you know, pretty good advice. That's pretty funny, but it's like, if they would have kept that, if they would have kept that up. Yeah. Would have been viral and so funny. Yeah. But some dickhead was like, Take, delete that. Oh, don't ever delete something. If it unless it unless it is a so unless it's like a, a slur. Don't ever delete something because you're going to make it so so much worse. Because guess what? A hundred million people have already screenshotted it. Yes. Like this. This was a screenshot of a deleted tweet. Dude, uh, so many like uh, advertising meetings where I was like, where they thought they fucked up. Mainly like three people were like yelling at them. I was like, don't delete this. You're gonna make it so yep. much worse. Yep. And then what happens when you delete it? You make it so much worse. You're making it a thing now. Yes. Because now it's something you're ashamed of. Right. Um, PBR saying, try eating ass. What about PBR is like eating ass? Fun for some. But you Fucking shouldn't... nasty for most. <laughs> yes. 
So while it's tempting to jump on these viral moments as quickly as possible, social media managers must take a moment to consider whether hopping on a certain trend aligns with the values of their entire organization. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, consumers have a hard time telling the difference between brand voices on social media, which makes it easier for them to create an overarching negative sentiment towards corporate accounts in general, which I would, I mean, the silence brand (laughs) meme is very telling of that. Yes. It's true. Um, And the best way social media managers can gut check. Oh, I can't ever fucking read that again. Gut check. My old manager. Ah. Let's do a gut check. Let's circle back. Shut the fuck up. Room full of white men. Yeah, we're good. Good, 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 good. (laughs) Oh, my God. Their decisions is by considering how a comment or participation in the conversation would feel if it played off online. Here's the thing. This also is like a slippery slope because managers are like chicken shit. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, oh, no, we shouldn't touch this at all. We shouldn't do it. It's like. If the topic is taboo, then that's when you should be apprehensive. But if you're mm-hmm. just trying to quickly churn out like um, pancakes or bay, let it fly. <laughs> I would like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just fucking let it fly. <laughs> pancakes or bay as food. <laughs> yes. Hashtag pancakes. <laughs> Hashtag IHOP. And then just like a low res picture of an IHOP <laughs> would be so fucking funny. It's Dada. So Dada is it like. Is. It's Dadaism. It's wait. fucking absurdism, surrealism. Let me read this to you. So Dada is essential to Gen Z humor. Um, it's It says one's father. God damn it. Dadaism is an art movement, by the way. Yes. Um, and a philosophy movement. Yeah, it's just, like, um, absolute nonsensical bullshit that you post on the internet. Yeah. You know, like someone uh, chugging an entire gallon of milk and then running around the track, and then it's just, don't you forget about me (laughs) playing as they run. Yeah. It makes no sense, and there is no punchline. It's Dada. Right. Yes. So there is criticism. Uh, Brand Twitter has a problem. Uh, Certain accounts found success in acting more human, replying in minutes or seconds rather than days, and even getting feisty towards their competition. This wasn't a small success. These early brands were synonymous with the platform. Mm -hmm. Wendy's went from the quirky burger Mm -hmm. brand to the incredible online powerhouse that sends tweets to get hundreds of thousands of likes multiple times a month. Insane. Brands you wouldn't have exactly considered at top of mind like Moon Pie and Steakum are now referenced every time someone talks about brands on Twitter. I... Steakum followed me way back when the kombucha meme went viral, when I was like super active on Twitter. I had no idea it was a real brand account. Yeah. I thought it was someone who had bought the Steakum account yeah. and was just like in our kind of friend group mm-hmm. with like Caucasian James and all that. Because I would see all these people that I used to follow that had these major followings interact with Steakum. And I was like, oh, that's just, you yeah. know, whatever. I had no idea. Yeah. And you click on the profile and like it's actual links to the product. Yeah. That is like insane i think that's the way to do it oh i oh i also like segueing i love when someone like changes their name to a brand account and then they just start tweeting like horrible Same profile shit. picture yes it's like um it's like ben and jerry's ice cream and it's just like i think everyone should get a gun <laughs> it's especially funny when like a uh, like a verified account does it because it looks like it's actually yeah. them but yeah. meanwhile it's like my name right next to it yep. oh um, my favorite like own on twitter is when um like someone changes their use, so you can't edit a tweet. So like, um, someone will tweet it like "Give everyone guns," and then a Republican will quote quote retweet it with like "I totally agree." And so it'll be like you know Dave Smith says "I totally agree," and then you change your username to "I think Dave Smith is a fucking idiot." And so Dave Smith now has a, a quote retweet on his page where it's like the person is insulting him. <laughs> yeah, I the love original that. tweet. Yeah, yes. it's like don't fucking interact with me. Yes. Yeah. I love that so much. But Moon Pie, I actually got an email to work on their stuff. They're based out of Tennessee. And I used to know the person who wrote for that as well. Mm. Um, so the number of brands being pays, paid, praised for their clapbacks or cringed at for their attempts at meme marketing have gone through the roof. When advertising goes from acquiring big budgets to requiring someone to write a sentence or Photoshop a picture, the duplication grows exponentially. Mm-hmm. So also, fun fact, in advertising, a copywriter is usually paired with the art director. And mm-hmm. so you're like partners. You're like husband and wife. But also mm. you could be like wife and wife or husband and husband or distant Relatives. Relatives, yeah, if you don't want to actually work directly together. Twice removed. But that's the person who makes the images, and then you write the copy for the images. Interesting. And then the problem with relying on one-to-one real-time responses to drum up organic engagement and draw attention to products is that tweets need to first get responses. Yes. 
<laughs> when it's all just fan cams of Doja Cat. Yes. <laughs> but those do increase engagement. They do. <laughs> just, um, just like them. Uh, when smaller brands looking for their big moment come out swinging on the platform, they often have to look outside their own timeline for something to react to. Without clarity in their voice, their story, or their crowd, this comes in the form of clout chasing every trending topic and big tweet they can find. Mm-hmm. The problem then becomes, how is this actually tying back to your brand? That's what I've been asking this entire time. Yes. It's like, how did we lose the original plot so hard Mm -hmm. why is wendy's (laughs) why (laughs) i wish that well should we go through the the cringe brand content i do want to go through the cringe brand content so this is a power plant oh i forgot that we had this to kick it off (laughs) horribly horribly timed tweet from cinnabon um if you're on youtube look at the fucking screen if you're not we're gonna do our best to visually or audibly describe it So this is a tweet from Cinnabon, and it is a Cinnabon with a drawing in cinnamon around it of Princess Leia. And the copy is, R.I.P. Carrie Fisher, you'll always have the best buns in the galaxy. Oh. Right after she died. I would wait a couple (laughs) couple years. Literally. (laughs) This is so, you should, you shouldn't really acknowledge celebrity deaths in a funny way. You should really acknowledge anyone's death in a funny way unless you're like a shit poster. Sure. Unless you're willing to deal with the consequences of that. Yeah. Like, um, what's that king who died? Or like that prince who died? Prince Philip. Oh, no, it was. (laughs) Those were so funny. Wait, what was, what was the president who died recently? Reagan. What? Or no, I don't know. So Nancy Reagan. If, okay, so if you're willing to suffer the consequences of making a joke out of someone who died, I know that like some Reagan or someone died, and then I made a dating profile for like Nancy Reagan, but it wasn't the Reagans. So yeah, yeah. I was willing to deal with the consequences of being sure. burned alive by Republicans. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This next one is by Subway Canada. True or false? Our turkey is 100% Canadian and free from artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives. <laughs> And then they put a poll. You set yourself <laughs> up. And it says true or false. And obviously they're going to say false. <laughs> Why would you do this to yourself? It's not free from artificial colors, <laughs> flavors, and preservatives. Why the fuck would you do that? This is an open invitation to get shit on. Yes. Why this tweet you... has been deleted. <laughs> Why would you do this? God. Oh, no. You read it. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. This is from the official verified U.S. Air Force account. The Taliban forces and... In- Farah City, hashtag Afghanistan, would much rather have heard hashtag Yanny or hashtag Laurel than the deafening hashtag Burt they got courtesy of our hashtag A10. Read more here at airforcetimes.com. Not them trying to capitalize on the Yanny or Laurel video that went viral however many years ago. You were making a joke about shooting civilians? That is unbelievable. You know what you'd rather hear other than gunfire? Yanny or Laurel. <laughs> what the fuck? Why would you ever? Are you out of your gourd? What the fuck is wrong with you? That is mental. Ew. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, God. There's another one from, oh, geez, from SpaghettiOs. It says, take a moment to remember. Hashtag Pearl Harbor with us. And then it's a SpaghettiO holding a American flag, which is, um, dude. Sorry. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god why would you ever do this what does your content calendar look like that you're like we gotta push something out on pearl harbor remember Remembered guys Day. big pearl harbor tweet today do not forget 9 a.m pst <laughs> holy fuck oh my god <laughs> okay oh, that is horrendous there's another one that says, it's from Verizon. Yes, T-Mobile, we're into BDSM. Bigger coverage map, devastating speed, and massive capacity. I just, I'm so tired. But also, dick and ball torture. <laughs> <laughs> Cock and ball torture. They just tack that on the end. <laughs> we're also into sucking toes. What's that? Can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now? Is that AT&T? Or is that Verizon? Is that AT&T? I think that might be AT&T. Never mind. That's AT&T. I was thinking about this the other day. We're like, relatively anywhere in the US, there's like great... Cell service? Is that what you're about to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it weird how like there's like cell towers like all over the US? Well, I just mean like when you think about that commercial where at that time it's like that was a big thing. Can you hear me now? Can yeah. you hear me? Like calls were so <laughs> I was just thinking about it. Isn't it crazy how technology improves <laughs> with time? Isn't it crazy how you can like make a phone call and it doesn't <laughs> yeah. drop? You, you make a phone 
phone call? Dude, I just talked to my mom in Texas. I literally was like, well, I was driving through like this country and I was still on service. <laughs> It's the little things. <laughs> this one is from the New Zealand police. When we all have to, <gasps> when we have to tell someone their family members died in a crash, and, and it's then a it, gift from the office. It what? says, "This is the worst." Oh my god! No, no uh, gift usage. <laughs> 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 if you if <laughs> gift usage could be the funniest thing mm-hmm. if it's done in the Dada way. Yes, this is too on the nose. This is too like. Why are you making a joke about it, man? That sad moment you have to tell someone their entire family is dead. Don't you need to be solving fucking <laughs> crimes, New Zealand police? <laughs> Don't you need to be, I don't know, doing your fucking job? Why are you tweeting Steve Carell gifts? Their next uh, tweet is like a poll. Meth or cocaine? <laughs> Isn't it the worst when someone gets shot in your neighborhood? Me, when I don't know if it's fireworks or a gunshot, I'd be like... Me, when I get shot? <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> that is god awful. Uh, there's, would you like to read this? <gasps> Wait, what? I remember when this happened. Do you uh, remember this? This is um this is a is this the mistake? Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, so context to the next one. It was trending on Twitter um about people in abusive relationships. Yeah. Why they stayed. And it was uh this was around the time I think of Me Too. Mm-hmm. Uh the Me Too movement where it was like people were telling their stories about how abusive situations are so not you know like you should have just left like why did you stay in a situation like that it's life threatening it is so dangerous and it is so you know like you have nowhere to turn women and people all around were telling their stories brands like they always do want to capitalize on this viral moment they the poor fucking 21 year old that was assigned to look at what was trending on twitter that day <laughs> saw hashtag why i stayed thinking yeah. It was just, you know, innocent. I would no, I would say that they were aware of the hashtag, but then the upper management was like we should use this cuz it's trending. Yes. But yes. You going, think? Do you I, think they the I, person who tweeted it knew? I think that the younger people knew that the hashtag should not be used and then someone was like, "No, it'll be okay." Right. You know, this will be fine. It's just Twitter. Yes. Oh, the last thing that person ever said. You're using the hashtag me too to sell <laughs> fucking Pizza Hut? I heart pizza hashtag #me too. <laughs> Are you kidding, dude? Pizza emoji. Yeah, this is the similar vein, so you read it. So it's a tweet from the official DiGiorno Pizza account that says, hashtag why I stayed, you had pizza, period. Mm -hmm. And then a follow-up. So uh, taking Sarah's advice, don't delete the tweet. Let's just post a fucking another one. Yes. This says, a million apologies. (laughs) Did not read what the hashtag was about before posting. They got fucking ripped to shred. And I remember this. So some examples of people using the hashtag hashtag is, I stayed because I was manipulated and deceived, battered physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. (laughs) My strength was gone. Hashtag why I stayed. Was scared for my life and family, broke, ashamed, blamed myself, hashtag why I stayed. Risking my life gave me a chance when suicide wouldn't. What wouldn't? And then DiGiorno's like, you had pizza. You had pizza. LMAO. <laughs> yes. Pizza's bae. <laughs> when pizza is bae. What's that, Um, like, buy me, like, buy me pizza. Rub my yeah, button, buy me pizza. touch my button, buy me pizza. Yeah. I'm going to tweet that unironically right now. <laughs> Please do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> This was in 2021? Okay, this, they got hacked. Okay, so Burger King UK tweeted, In 2021, women belong in the kitchen. And then they replied, If they want to, of course, yet only 20% of chefs are women. We're on a mission to change the gender ratio in the restaurant oh industry. Oh my god! By empowering female employees with the opportunity to pursue a culinary career. <laughs> we are proud to be launching a new scholarship program which will help female burger employees pursue their culinary dreams. So context, this is during International Women's Day. Yes. <gasps> and so they were trying to say that as Burger King, women belong in the kitchen, not men. Yeah. Like, you know, because it's so fast food, it's men cooking it in the back. And then why would they do this? Everyone... <laughs> Why would you do this? Like, you're not supposed to incendiary sort of shit to, like, I guess, draw people's eye, but it's, like, the worst way to go about it. Oh, that is god-awful. 215,000 likes, 62,000 retweets, and 61,000 quote tweets. Why would you do that? They really thought they were doing something with this, too. I I bet you. Yeah. If they want to, of course. Shut the fuck up, Burger 
working? McDonald's the first month, of, like first day of Pride is like gay people should never get married. And that's why we're trying to give free meals to gay people everywhere. It's like, Jesus, stop fucking talking. Oh my God. This was last year. It literally is like gay people shouldn't get married unless McDonald's <laughs> caters the <laughs> wedding. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so then there's one by the American Heart Association at CDC Gov found that the leading cause of death in people with type 2 diabetes is, and then they gave a poll. Why so would you do a poll? The final results, renal disease, cardiovascular disease, respiratory d- disease, and then none of them. No one answered anything. Nope. Your main issue, uh, American Heart Association, was starting your tweet off with someone's at. Yeah, that it, immediately it, suppresses it. It's going to hide it, and only, only the person that you're adding is going to see it, so you kind of like fucked yourself. Mm -hmm. Also, the leading, I think it's um, cardiovascular disease because they're the American Heart Association. I would be willing to bet. Also, why? Why would you do this? I just don't like, it pisses me. I get angry sometimes when I realize how out of touch brands are. Why? Why was this written off on? Yeah, found that the leading cause of death in people. Is this a fun poll? No. Guess how people type diabetes die every year. Yeah. Someone follows up with gun violence or something. What what are your final thoughts on brand content? You know, I think that there is something new coming uh-huh. because with the influx of Generation Alpha, they're going to completely change how marketing works, I think, like when they get to college age. Mm-hmm. And I think that the current strategy of, you know, the Wendy's, even the successes we've seen, yeah. I don't find funny anymore. Mm-hmm. Or even quirky relatable, I find it a little bit annoying. But it's a weird thing. And I don't want this to come off as like Sarah and I are bitching because we rely on brands to yes pay us. Yeah. And it's just a very, I, I want the listener to know that it's a very selective process and there's a lot that goes on in the background. Mm-hmm. And so we realize it's kind of a necessary thing especially in this age where we're rejecting brands and making fun of them and saying they're cringe. Yes. To work with them is necessary. So Mm -hmm. it's a very slippery slope. Yeah. I would say my thing for brands and like upper management is like definitely listen to the younger people in your organization because just because they're young doesn't mean like they're dumb. I would say that you're actually at a disadvantage the older you get and like, you know, failure. What is it like late adopters? Mm -hmm. um, You're going to screw yourself if you don't trust younger people and if you don't learn like social media literacy. Yeah. Because it's only going to get much quicker. The social media life cycle is 24 hours. And if you're not even on the pulse, like just like every week, you're going to seriously fall far behind. And that's like you don't you actually don't speak a language now. And you're trying to you know, utilize your marketing to the best of its ability. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trying to sell to people in Mexico and the entire ad is in English and there's occasional like hola or something, that's not going to cut it. It's not the The, way. The entire audience is, they're not going to understand what you're fucking saying. It's It's also the pride you were talking about earlier of like, I'm not on TikTok. Well, you better fucking get on it. You better like get on fucking line because it's only going to get so much worse. Yes. I think that's a great place to wrap up love you guys she, please <laughs> she just kissed me no <laughs> just, she gave sarah a forehead kiss oh that actually would really no you don't have to <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening be sure to like, like subscribe comment comment download please please five Thank stars you. rate us five stars we're available everywhere mm-hmm. if you have just listened to it on spotify go give it a watch on youtube guys thank you so much then you'll see the pictures but yes we're available any place you get your podcasts literally any place thank you guys for listening bye and pancakes are bay as fuck when pancakes are pizza when pancakes are live when you fuck pizza all right bye guys